Welcome to Basket Talks new episode. This is Mir Demir Demirar from Basket Talks. In this episode, we are with Mike Tan. Hi, coach. How are you? I'm great, brother. How are you today? I'm great too. How was your training today? It was good. It was an early one today. It was 4:45 in the morning. We started today, so it was a uh, it was an early start time, but but good nonetheless. Yeah. And then uh, we all know you on Instagram, your shooting tips and Instagram videos. But we just able to shooting drills videos. But we all don't know anything about you, like okay? Your basketball career, and I'm curious about that. And yeah. when and where did you develop an interest in basketball? Develop an interest in basketball just through playing it at the park growing up it was just something that i fell in love with i liked the idea that i could get better by myself that was the big thing the fact that i didn't need anybody else there to help me and i could work on it as much as i want that was all i needed as somebody who i i like my alone time as it is so finding a game that i was fairly good at early and then seeing the progress with more time i put in it was addicting it still is to a degree right it, it's the best Yeah, thank you. And we talked about a little bit, but I want to ask that in recording. This is your jersey. It's in your background. You like it's f- number 15. Yeah, that's my f- number 15. So that's where I played in college. I played at a school at the time. It was called Philadelphia University. It's actually now called Jefferson University. But I played there under a Hall of Fame about a coach that's actually now in the Basketball Hall of Fame. He's one of the all-time winningest coaches of all time at the uh, not just the Division II level, but but overall, well over a thousand wins. Uh, was a really really cool experience. Got to start there. All four years. I believe I'm second all time in three point field goals made there. Really, really cool. Really cool experience. Super, super grateful for the opportunity to play there for sure. Yeah, and uh, I'm curious about now. I saw you always make your shots. You know, you all you always make it. I like it. <laughs> bug in a game like a heck, heck. And then I'm curious about you always be like this, like in your college days. Uh, you are the same. No, I don't make every single shot. Right? Like, <laughs> that's uh, that's not that's not realistic, right? It's, but I I could always shoot the basketball. I, I mean, that's that's what I was known for. I definitely didn't play a whole lot of defense. I was out there to shoot the basketball, so that's that's what I did. What kind of got me along the path of what I do now in terms of being able to teach it. But being able to do it and being able to teach it is really two completely different things. Being able to communicate it in a way in which you can get through to the individual in front of you that takes a real skill set that is still being worked on on my end right like i fell in love with basketball early on as a kid because i could consistently get better at it i've now fallen in love with teaching for the same reason i can get better at it every day and i never have all the answers i'm never going to be at my peak i'm always going to be getting better so that's what i really like about it yeah thank you and as i said at the beginning i like your instagram teams actually that's give me too much that's really a chance for players because you talk about everything mm-hmm. around the shooting and that's really great for us first I'm curious, could you tell me how a player can train with you? They can train with me in person, first and foremost, right? Like I have a lot of people that will fly in from different parts of my country here in the United States. Also from other countries people have come into, but they'll come in for certain periods of time. So if you ever want to train with me, I'm in New Jersey. So you just reach out to me. Aside from that, I actually, I developed this online type coaching where anybody has the ability to work directly with me. And when I say that, I, I truly mean it. I think that shooting is such a personalized thing thing that I wanted everybody to have access to their own shooting coach. And um, I take it super seriously. I uh, I haven't taken a day off from responding to all of my players and clients in three years. So, I mean, I, I'm, I'm in there, I'm working all day, and it's been an awesome way to be able to have an open dialogue with players, feel what they're, or, or see or hear or read what they're feeling and being able to communicate it back to them in a way that they're going to understand. In a selfish way, it makes me a better teacher because I'm seeing hundreds of messages a day come through from from my players and I need to explain things in a hundred different ways. But if you're really looking to get better at shooting, I really don't think there's anything better out there in terms of the access to, I like to think I know what I'm doing and I've seen some really, really great results from players, from beginners all the way up to players that play for a living so yeah that's what uh, cmikedun.com there's the there's the plug right there you can go find it yeah yeah thank you and when i saw your uh, you know uh, online subscribe subscribe blah, 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 blah. yeah <laughs> you, yes. you understand i think yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's really <laughs> hard subscription there you go yeah yeah <laughs> subscription uh 
I I'm thinking like, uh, all right, maybe I, I need that because my shot is bad right now. But all my basketball trainers, like where my arm going like this, they was like, hey, 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 your arm. Yeah, and touch my arm to fix it. And yeah. I I'm like, okay, how can I fix it? My own, because you don't see me in that time. You only uh, talk about details and the other stuff. How did you figure out at online program? Yeah, so it was quite simple. And a lot of it was actually taken from a friend of mine who started a, he started a service similar, but with health of the knees, right? So his was all, all around knees. And so what I did with shooting was players constantly send in video of what they're doing. And I'm able to analyze the video. I'm able to make video on my end as well, send it to them saying, this is what's going on. This is how we progress. Ah, I yeah, we're it. able to chat with you. Oh so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you chat with me nonstop throughout the day. So you have like, like they have my personal number, right? And then through text message and through voice message, we communicate all the time. I'll make videos, send them to them saying, this is exactly what you're doing. This is how we fix it. And then also like the, the benefit of seeing so many people every single day within that subscription is that you find the most common things that are happening and then make certain content that surrounds that that they can then go in and review too. But it's constant back and forth dialogue because just like you said, if I'm not there, but to me, it's the next best thing in terms of you have to record what you're doing. You send it to me. It's like a constant shot breakdown just every single day or as much as you want to use it, essentially. Yeah, and the other way in the other paper, it's really great because you reach all over the world. Like now, I'm in Turkey, you're in uh, New Jersey, oh, right? And, yeah, New Jersey, yeah. Uh, and be able to talk each other right now. This is fantastic. Uh, yeah, in other it's amazing. Way. It's amazing. Uh, and uh, can you tell me one of the best shooting drills for players of different level, like a uh, beginner, amateur and pro? I have a I have an interesting view on this. I don't think there's one great shooting drill. The reason I say that is because we're all so unique. Uh, we're all our kind of individual puzzles in a sense. Where you are in your shooting journey is way different than where I am, right? So the drill that would be best for me may not necessarily coincide with where you're currently at with, with your journey, right? The best shooting drill that you can possibly do is the one that is working deliberately on what you're trying to get better at. That's the big thing. And a lot of it just comes down to what's going on up here. How mindfully focused are you on what it is that you're trying to change? And you have to know what you're trying to change and incorporate a drill. But at the end of the day, it doesn't necessarily come down to a drill as much as it just comes down to you understanding what the shot is and what the little complexities that are in within a shot, figuring out how to mold them to who you are and then make it simple at the end of the day because that's that's the goal right we want to take something that's maybe a little bit complicated and then boil it down to to something that's as simple as possible so you know my big thing with all players is we're just trying to take away i want to take away as much movement as possible in a shot because the more we take away the less variability there is and then the easier it is to repeat in kind of those more and more dynamic situations so i know that's not a direct answer to what's the best drill but if you can be deliberately focused on what it is that you're trying to get better at and have a game plan, whether it's a coach or a program or anything that you're following, you're going to get better at it. But a lot of it takes place upstairs. You have to be able to be willing to, to really connect to what it is that you're trying to change. I always tell players, any habit that has been created unconsciously can be undone consciously so long as your intention is there. Yeah, thank you. And can we say the shooting is a mental game? Yeah, this? I mean, that, the, everything is mental right? Like yeah. not shooting, right? Everything at the end of the day just goes on up here, right? Our yeah. conversation right now is happening up here, right? How you're processing information, how I'm speaking, right? So of course, 100%. It's it's very, very mental. But then ob obviously the physical part comes into it as well. I can't just think about yeah. shooting all day and become better. I need to think about it and do it at the same time. Yeah, I agree with you. And then I remember something right now. Lebron was said in an interview. I can't remember clearly. Journalists asked Lebron about how can you shoot like three in a row or four in a row. And Lebron said great shooters don't think uh, when they shooting. What are your thoughts about this? Like a great shooter? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you got I think. It. I think it's unique to the individual. I think maybe there's probably some players that completely kind of black out and, and can do that. Whereas maybe there's some very analytical players that maybe are thinking about what they're doing and, and that's how they perform best. There's obviously like that point of, of reaching that low like state within anything that you do when you just show up to the court, whether it's in a college game or whether it's in a pickup game where you know you're not going to miss and it's like you've, you've encountered or become something that you wish you could just bottle up and save for later. But everybody's different. I think that we 
shoot best when we're not overanalyzing. I think that kind of goes, again, like with anything. I think if you're having a conversation with somebody and you're constantly thinking about what you're going to say and not just kind of listening and reacting to the information, the conversation usually doesn't go that well. As uh, in, in relation to yeah. shooting, it's probably a very similar thing. Yeah, uh, but uh, in that time, because this question, because of my, I don't have super information about shooting. And mm. this question about this, and this is why I'm asking you. Uh, I love it. That's no, great. Yeah. <laughs> great. Yeah. It's, it's a great question. They're, 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 they're awesome questions. Thank you. Thank you. And in that time, when I read it, I'm like, yeah, I, when I'm shooting, I'm very nervous. Like in my thoughts, what happened when I miss? What happened when I, you know, when the balls go uh, air ball? And my thoughts, yeah, I need to maybe stop thinking when i'm shooting this would if if i can offer some advice for you on this right because yeah. i i have players that do this so my big thing with shooting is us understanding what our our ideal shot will look like or what it, the ideal shot is and understanding those pieces so when a player is going through a little bit of a struggle whether they're missing shots i don't like to turn the attention to oh what's happening here like what what am i doing wrong i like to bring the attention back to that perfect ideal like you know what it is that you have to do right don't focus Focus on what's wrong. Focus on what you know is right. And then do that within the next rep because we're not going to get the previous one back. And if we're just in this constant mindset of trying to think, oh, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? Well, wrong, wrong, wrong sends feedback up here that you're not doing well. And that's not necessarily the yeah. case. Maybe we're just a little bit off track. And to bring ourselves back on track, we can then go back to the image or the thoughts of what our perfect or ideal shot looks like. So it's just a different way of framing it. Again, like we said earlier, like all mental, right? All upstairs. So early on stages and practice scenarios, the more deliberate and mindful you can be amazing because you have to think it and feel it in order to make the change but eventually you're going to get to that point where you can start to just move through it and becomes habit like anything else yeah thank you and i want to move on to the next question and okay. next question is what are the non-true and non-false shooting facts I think the biggest kind of myth out there is, is this idea that you need more reps. If you're not a great shooter, get more reps and get more reps in. And the truth of the matter is, if you're not a good shooter now, the answer isn't more reps. It's probably just diagnosing what it is that's going on with your shot and then getting more deliberate time in. But if you're already mechanically kind of at a disadvantage with what you're doing, just taking more reps is going to further ingrain those bad habits. The answer is not never more reps. It is reps in a way, but it's deliberate reps, right? To me, that's one of the biggest things that I wish more and more players understood, along with this idea that you just have to shoot game speed shots. I think that's a that's a common misconception because in order to, to change a habit, we, we can't go fast. We're going to have to go slow. We're going to have to feel, and then we can change it. If you can feel it, then you can start to change what it is you want to get better at. And I think the last, you know, the last kind of myth that I think I hear a lot is that not everybody can be a shooter. And I completely disagree with that. I think that anybody can start to improve upon their shooting should they start to understand the the arrangement in which things have to happen. If you have two legs, two arms, you got all you need. Now it's just about being able to move the ball in a way that takes advantage how we create energy best and how we can create consistency and all that kind of stuff. So I don't subscribe to the idea that some people can do it and some people can't. If you believe you can do something, you 100% can do something. And that goes far beyond just what's happening on the basketball floor. Yeah, thank you. And then I think it's going to be connected with this. What are your advice for young players. Yeah. I tell every young player, you could be the best shooter in the world. And I mean that. Every group of kids that I get in front of, I tell them the best shooter in the world could be in this gym right now. Shooting is just a skill. It's like walking. It's like talking. It's like anything else that you pick up. The more you do it, the more aware of what you are doing, the better you're going to get at it right? It doesn't matter how tall you are, strong you are, fast you are, you have the ability to be great. If you're willing to put in the time, start slow, and then build up your understanding of what's happening. If you start relatively early as a kid, you can do some absolutely amazing things. And all teams need shooters. I've been on phone calls with federations, been I talked to many, many agencies. They're all looking for shooters. They need people that can shoot the basketball. And there's a misconception that everybody does it really well. They don't. It's not crowded there. Become a great shooter and the opportunities that you're going to be able to afford yourself later on down the line can be really, really cool, right? You just have to believe that you can do it and then put in the necessary work towards it. Yeah, thank you for that. And ah, <laughs> and, uh, I didn't recognize that. I, I'm looking like evil right now. Did you see my, <laughs> do you see my eyes like red? You're, you're good, man. It's all good. Nah. So uh, let's move on to the final question. And okay. in your opinion, what are the musts of basketball? The musts? 
you have to be willing to know that you'll never know it all. I think that's the big thing. If you can go into basketball as a player, as a coach, as a trainer with this open mindset of what I know today may not be relevant tomorrow and what I know tomorrow may not be relevant the next day. As long as you're on this constant path of just growth and of learning more, there's a cliche saying is like, you're never really done. You're never, you're never finished, right? The more I know, the less I know is, is kind of the saying. Be an open mind to everything because you can draw inspiration from not just things happening on the basketball court, but from far outside of it. And as long as you're willing to be open to things, listen to people, try new things, put in the time, then not just you grows as an individual, but the game grows too. Right. And I think that's to me, you could do all the skill work and all this kind of stuff in the world. It's not really about that. It's always to me, especially with the players I get to work with about the growth of them as a human being. And you can learn so much through this game. I'm still I get to learn so much through players that I work with. I thank them every day because I say I'm getting an education through working with them, just through seeing life and seeing things through their eyes. And if you're willing to do that with this game, you can start to do some really, really cool stuff both on and off the floor with it. Yeah, I agree with you. And again, this is a man. Mental prepare too. Yes. yes. And oh. with all things uh, related in basketball and related in life, we can say all this right. connected with mental. And my father was said about this something. He said, when I give you information, you just need to believe it because beliefs can broke. That means you can change this. But if you think like this is my opinion and this is connected with me you can't change this or you can't see different ways of the way just you need to break your wall and ego and you know blah 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 it's such great advice it's such great i mean it's it's so it's so true that's so true and then uh, thank you for coming and all replies uh, to my questions yes absolutely man thank you for having me how old are you man uh, i'm 16 16 dude how cool is it that you're 16 years old and uh, you're doing you. stuff like this talking to people all over the world that thank you that, that's amazing man that's so that's so cool man Con congrats to you for doing for doing something that you like to do and getting it, you may not realize it now but the longer you do this you're going to start downloading information from so many different people that you get to start nitpicking and, and adding to your life and, and to whatever else amazing things you're going to do because you're only 16 years old doing this so awesome thank man you. Keep going with it. it. Keep going with it, brother. That's awesome stuff. Thank you for advices. And thank you again for all and accept my invitation. And then Absolutely. Uh, I hope uh, we meet in real Europe or, uh, you know, if I come to USA, I want to, you know, participate of your trainings. And uh, I, <laughs> I want to see your face when I'm shooting. Like... <laughs> <laughs> There you go, man. I love it. <laughs> again, thank you and see you. Thank you, brother. In this episode, we are with Mike Dunn. Thank you for your time. I hope you enjoy. See you in next episode. Bye-bye.